testing is probably one of my favorite parts of working in Pro Tools. And here in video six, I'm gonna show you how simple it is to mix inside of Pro Tools, how to get plugins where you need them, how to route things, how to use sends and group faders, how to even use audio suite plugins and why you'd wanna use those in certain sessions. So let's take a look at taking this song, sculpting a little bit with included plugins inside of Pro Tools. So when it comes time to mix your song inside of Pro Tools, you're in for a treat. Pro Tools has a fast mixing workflow and comes with a ton of great plugins that are at your disposal to get the perfect sound and then get creative sounds as well. And I've got a looped section of my chorus here. Lift up your I'm gonna kind of start working on this part of the song and bring my mix together. I'm gonna to hit Command and Equals to flip over to my mix window, or you can do that from the window menu here. Mix or Edit. You can also notice that my master fader clipped. When I press play, all my tracks are sending too much signal to the master fader. Lift up your first rule of good mixing is to make sure your tracks are at an appropriate volume. I love to pull the audio down, make sure I'm not clipping any individual channels, and definitely not clipping the master fader. Leave plenty of headroom for yourself so that the song still sounds musical inside the digital domain. Now my drum tracks are pretty hot, so I'm probably going to pull them down a little bit. And the guitars might be a little hot as well. Let's see if we can get a better balance. Lift up your eyes. That's feeling a little bit better. Now let's try to use a little bit of compression on the drums to get a little more thump out of the kick and snare, but also contain the volume so it doesn't clip my mix bus like I was doing earlier. You go up to any track you want to insert any plugins and find an available slot. In this case, I have a virtual instrument, Expand, which is playing my drums, so I'm going to add plugins after Expand. I'm going to choose Avid Compressor Limiter. This is a great compressor that comes free with Pro Tools. I use it all the time in my sessions. It gives you plenty of control and it's very transparent. You have a lot of presets that might be good here to get started with. I'm fine with presets on drums because they can give you a good starting point. Let's see drums comp. This gave me a 4 to 1 ratio, slow attack, fast release, but it's got the gain pretty high. Let's take a listen to what this is doing to my drums. I'll solo them. Take a listen. Too much. I'm going to back off the threshold here. And you can see what it's doing in this case. It's turning down my kick drum a lot more, which is good. The kick's pretty loud on this loop track. So that'll turn that down, compress it, and then I can control the gain with a makeup gain here. Much better. It's turning down my kick drums, but allowing me to turn up the snares and everything else. Here's before and after. Before. Much more contained drum performance. Now I've got the snares where I want them. That's great. Now let's grab that bass guitar. I'm going to move it a little closer to the drums clicking and dragging it, bring that in the mix. Now 
another great compressor that comes with Pro Tools is the BF76, which is an 1176 clone, which is a very, very famous compressor, and it has a very fast attack. It's just great on all kinds of things. Let's see if we can smooth out this bass performance and fatten it up a little bit. A little bit rounder, fuller sustain on that bass. What you can also do is grab an EQ, a seven band, to sculpt this bass sound a little bit more. I want to clean up some of the low, low end, some of the low mid, and make sure that it sounds real fat at the bottom and clear at the top. Little bit of that low end boost at the bottom sculpted out some of the yucky low mids that make it sound cheap and a little more clarity up top there's still a little bit more output volume than i'd like so i'm going to use the output knob on the eq to turn down everything after the eq so i'm not making the bass louder with the eq i'm just sculpting the sound There we go. Now we can bypass and hear the difference. Much rounder, a little more clarity in the top end with the fingers. It sounded really, really nice. Now on the guitars, I'm going to do a simple high pass filter to roll off a little low end on those. Roll off, say, everything below 100. And then I'm going to hold Option and click and drag that over to the lead guitar. And one more time over to the acoustic guitar. And let's go over to the vocals and see if we can control them with some compression and some EQ as well. Lift up your I've got the same compressor limiter. And what I want to do is kind of leave it at the default settings. I like it, three to one ratio, pretty medium attack and release. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm compressing a little bit on my loud vocal hits and bring up the overall output gain. Lift up your That way it's turning down my loud notes, keeping the other notes unaffected, nice and more consistent sound. Use a little bit of EQ here. I want to brighten up the top end and sculpt out some of that low mid as well. Take a listen to what this sounds like in solo. 
Lift up your hands, O oh, you gates, and be lifted up, you ancient of door. That stuff, I want to take a little bit of that out. I'm going to do a high pass filter here, blow off any low end, and open up the top end here. By about one and a half dB. Let's take a listen. Lift up your hands. I think the vocals aren't loud enough, so I'm just bringing them up a little bit here. Lift up your hands, you gates, and be lifted up. Ancient of doors, she wait for the king of glory. I'm liking that. I'm going to copy those compression and EQ settings to both my double vocal and my harmony vocal. Lift up your hands, you gates, and be lifted up. quick I think my original guitar is getting a little lost in the mix so after the high pass filter I'm gonna add one more EQ here and try to find a frequency that's gonna make that guitar poke out I'm listening to this guitar here I'm gonna do this in context with the mix so I don't fool myself in solo Lift up your hands, oh you I think that's helping. Now remember those returns we had in this template. We had a reverb, a delay, and a chorus. We can use those to affect things like the vocals or the lead guitar. So let's use the reverb return. And let's take my vocals and in the sends, go ahead and send a little bit of my vocal to the reverb return track. So now we have a, a fader that we can send some of the vocal to the reverb. So let's press play. Lift up your hands, oh you gates, and be lifted up, you ancient of doors, as you wait. All right. Lift up your hands, oh you gates, and be lifted up, you ain't. Let's say we didn't want reverb. Let's say we wanted some delay. So instead of that reverb send, we could send it to the delay return. Let's see what that sounds like. Lift up your hands, oh you gates, and be lifted up, you ain't. And what we're listening to is the mod delay that comes with Pro Tools. And it's synced up here. We can make it quarter notes, let's say. Lift up your hands, oh you gates, and be lifted up, you ancient of doors, as you wait for the king. Add some feedback. What I like to do is roll off a low pass filter to roll off some of that top end on the delay so that it's not as clear as the lead vocal. It's a little more muffled. Lift up your hands, oh you Let's take a listen to that in the mix. Lift up your hands, oh you be lifted up. Yeah, that's too long. Let's try eighth notes. Lift up your hands, oh you gates, and be lifted up. Ancient of doors, as you wait for the King of Glory's crown, and the King of Glory reigns. Very cool. Now, one thing you can do as well is use some group tracks. So let's say all my guitars. I wanted them to have some reverb. I could send them each individually to the reverb track, or instead of sending them to my output speakers, I could hold, I can select all three by holding shift and clicking, and then hold shift, option, and choose one of the output tracks 
and select a new track. And it's gonna say, oh, so you wanna send these tracks output to a new track. What kind of track? Well, I want a stereo auxiliary track and I'm gonna name it Guitars. It's gonna create it right next to those tracks. And now what I have is these three tracks going through this track. If I don't let that track be solid, you can't hear them. The cool thing about this is now I can do a couple things. I can not only use this to send all of the tracks to the reverb return with one simple fader, so they can all have a room sound with one fader, but I can also put a compressor or an EQ or any effect on this group track and it's gonna affect all the guitars. So let's say I wanted to use the lo-fi plugin to give it some grit. little saturation on all the guitars with one simple plug-in on one fader and now I have a fader to control all the guitars in the mix Lift up your A lot of possibilities there. I like to use group tracks for drums. If you do multi-track drums, vocals, guitars, keyboards, you name it, makes it very, very powerful. Now let's say you're running out of CPU power and you want to use some plugins, but you can't instantiate them anymore on your computer. Let's say you've maxed out your computer, you've got a ton of plugins running. It's pretty hard to do with Pro Tools 11 and a 64-bit audio engine. But let's say you just want to write some effects just to the track. There's something called Audio Suite plugins that are very, very helpful, both creatively and functionally. Most of the plugins we've been playing with have been real-time inserted AAX plugins inside of Pro Tools. But what I'm gonna show you is how to use almost all the same plugins and do it in non-real-time and actually process your track. Let's say in verse two, I wanted to put a cool telephone effect in my vocal. The heavens declare the glory of our Savior. I could select the area I wanna process, go up to Audio Suite, choose Avid, and then I could choose all these same plugins I had in the drop down menu before. Here's my EQ. Go to the presets, special effects, telephone two, preview it by pressing this little button. The glory of our Savior. And then click render. Now I've applied that effect directly to the audio clip. No plugin instantiated anywhere, no CPU power, it's done. And the cool thing about this is now this is actually a new piece of audio. So now I can use editing to actually affect that. Let's say I like the telephone effect here, but when this big line opens up with the harmony and the double vocal, I want that to be the normal vocal. I can simply drag back the original performance that's not affected and you get the switch. The heaven the glory of our Savior. It's as simple as that. There's a lot more to mixing inside of Pro Tools than this, but it gives you a little taste of what's possible to get you going in your sessions. Now, in the next and final video, I'm going to show you how to finish out your mix, get it nice and loud for commercial volumes, to share it with the world, get it out of Pro Tools so it's a living, breathing thing that you can play for your friends, put on your website, share with your fans, and get it out of your studio, which is the whole point of making music anyway. We'll see you on the next video.